so what we've got going on here is I'm going to be filling up a bunch of these 200 cell nursery flats. So these guys here, if you guys have watched my nursery video, I'll put the link up here, check that out. It kind of covers a lot of the gear that I use in the nursery. So I'm going to be filling up these cell flats and um, I'm going to do it in my, I made this little, well actually Mark made this, it was my idea, but Mark made it. It's just our little soil bin. I used to have a soil table, a mixing table over here, but to um, be more efficient with our space, I've put this on casters that rolls underneath the table. So the soil that's in here right now is the stuff we use for microgreens, but I've got a bin I've made of uh, pre-made soil for these flats, so I'm just going to put it in here and fill up my flats in there. So this is just a a soil that I made. It's it's my Sunshine Mix 3 with some fertilizer called Gaia Green. It's a 444. I've mentioned that in the nursery video as well. And um, I've added a bunch of worm castings to it and I've watered it down really well so it's nice and it's uh, it's nice and damp. It doesn't have to be like a mixture for making soil blocks but it's good enough that when I fill it into these flats, I'm going to get a nice packed down um, plug so that it doesn't dry out quick. Because if you fill up your flats with too much dry soil and you don't pack it down well enough, they'll dry out really quick. You get a sunny day, your plugs dry out, your, your plants die. So you got to be careful there. So I like to use a, a, a fairly wetted down soil mix when I'm packing it into these flats. And I pack it down really good so the plug is really tight, and I'll show you how I do that. I've got my soil in here, it's nice and mixed together. So all I'm doing is just taking flats and filling them up. So I'm just using a cup, big cup, it's what I use for putting my microgreens on. Just spreading soil around. I'm just going to do one to show you. I'm not going to sit here and do all of these on the video, but let me just move this. So when I'm doing a flat, I just spread my hands around really good, pack it in. There's always going to be less um, pressure on the corners. Like usually when you're pressing down, most of your force is going to go in the middle. So you got to make sure to go around the edges but what I'll show you in a second I do that makes quite a difference is use a second flat so just take an empty flat level this out take an empty flat of the same size put it on there push it all around middle sides all around and then you'll see on it where the depressions are where there's less soil and so that's where it's really easy to identify where to add more soil and so you just go around and put more soil on there. You know, once you get into a rhythm to this, it's not going to take you much more than a couple minutes to do a flat. And then seeding it is something altogether, but it's something else altogether. But doing this is, is pretty easy. You know, I might just take it again, do one more press, make sure it's really firm. I like my plugs to be really tight. That way they don't dry out so fast. And so again, I can see the sides, it's always the edges that need more soil, it's rarely the middle. So there we go. There's one flat, and we like to use our microgreen trays as a base because these kind of bend around and so we stabilize them with one of those, that way it's nice and rigid, we can move it around in the greenhouse, it's easy. So. That's a flat. All right, so I've got my flat and I've got my seed. I'm doing this old school. This is nursery planting 101. This is the basics. I don't have a vacuum seeder. I don't have a plate seeder. Doing it old school. You know, our farm is so small that we've been able to do it this way for since I started, going on eight years now. And it works for our context. You know, if I was cranking out 30 flats a week, I'd absolutely get a vacuum seeder. Uh, and I still might even get one this year, we'll see. But either way, we've got 14 plants, uh, flats to plant by hand. It's not a ton of work. And um, so I've got my Salanova seed, and so this is a pelleted seed. 
And I plant four types of Salanova. I've mentioned them many times before. I'll mention it again. Green Sweet Crisp is 75% in here, and then the other 25% is Red Sweet, Green Butter, and Red Butter. And that, those are about 8.3%, so I've just mixed them all together so I don't have to worry about what is what. I'm just gonna plant it all. So this is how I do it. So I'm really simple when it comes to planting. Put some seed in my hand, and I just use my fingers. And I usually have a few in my fingers. So I kind of push the seeds down a little bit. Like you notice that I didn't even go ahead. Sometimes people will make depressions on the flat with their fingers. I don't even bother doing that. I'm just taking the seed and pushing it down a little bit. And I will cover this all with another little bit of soil on the top. So there's a nice layer of soil. It'll be a dry layer of soil that I sprinkle on top, but I'm just, you know, I've got maybe five or so pinched in my fingers and I can just drop them like so. And you can do it where you drop one and then you push it down, you drop one, you push it down, you drop one, push it down with your finger. You know, some people worry about the exact depth of the seeds they plant. I don't, I just, they all get pushed down anywhere between an eighth to a quarter inch. And um, I don't sweat those minor details. I know when I, when I started out, I was always worried about, oh, this, okay, this seed, it, a beet seed, it has to go deeper and so on and so forth. And you know what? I don't really find there's any measurable difference. If you've got your soil consistency right, then uh, it's all good. So you can do this in different ways, you know lay them out and then go back and push, whatever whatever works for you. So that's my first handful of seeds. So now I can just go and push these guys down a little bit. You know, you can use four fingers, however coordinated you are. You can use more if you like. You know, there's, there's no one way to do anything. You can, there's always many things that work and it really just comes down to what works for you in your context. Because I, every day I hear people say, Curtis, why don't you do it this way? Why don't you do it that way? It's like, because this works for me. So you do it your way, I'll do it my way. But I always just try to show you guys what I do. And you know, if you, if you come to something else that works better for you, great. So what I like about pushing the seed down when it's in is that it n it's nestled in that hole really well. And um, you know, the more I do this, the more I realize a vacuum seeder would certainly be easier. But this has worked for many years and there's no reason it won't continue to work. It's just, do I want to spend the time that I do on this? So we will see about that. I probably will be ordering myself a vacuum seeder. Needless to say, all I do now is sprinkle some soft soil on it. I'm not using the, the mix. And what many people do is actually put vermiculite straight on top. And that's a great way to do it too. I just don't have any vermiculite at the moment. So I'm not going to let that stop me from planting these flats because they need to get planted. And I just go and sprinkle a little bit on there. Nice and light. Just like that, spread it around. So I've got a nice light layer on there. I'll just kind of even it about with my hand. And then what I'm gonna do is just press it down with my hands. You don't wanna disturb it too much, just in case you had a seed that was closer to the surface. If you really mess, move your hand around there, you could mess up where your seeds are placed and you don't want that. So that's done. Now I just water it in. Normally, if I was just gonna plant a bunch, I'd, I'd plant a whole table's worth and just water them all in at once. But just for the sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna water this one in. You know, it's important when you're watering to really never just hold it in a place once because that can just disturb a bunch of soil. You wanna evenly move your arm back and forth over top and so that is our planted flat all right so that is my planted flat I've labeled it little tag there 
labeled what it is, put the date on there, and it's good to go. So that's it for the day, guys. In a few days, I'm gonna be getting on an airplane and flying to New Zealand. Very excited for that. We still have some tickets, not a lot for the four day, but we still have a decent amount for the one day workshop down at Ter in, in Taranaki at Roebuck Farm. And what we've decided to do with the one day workshop is we're actually gonna teach part of it on the farm. So this is sort of an added bonus. Originally, this format of class is done um, in a classroom type setting with me doing PowerPoint and it's, it's interactive, lots of, lots of Q&A and stuff, but because we've got uh, a decent amount of students that we can actually have on the farm, we're going to be teaching this workshop on the farm and we'll spend some of the time outside in the field looking at the jang cedar, running the tilter, doing some bed prep and kind of showing you guys a little bit of, of uh, for those of them that can't make the four day workshop, we'll be showing some of the things that we'll be doing in the four day workshop. So. I hope to see you guys there if you're in New Zealand or Australia, anywhere around that area. It's definitely worth the trip. Roebuck Farm is a beautiful place to be, unbelievable setting. And Jody Roebuck, who's a good buddy of mine, has done an incredible job of getting his farm, turning it into a 30-inch bed market garden just like myself and Jean-Martin Fortier. So it's a very rare opportunity. And I've got workshops coming up in Kelowna, all that stuff's on my website. And we'll talk to you guys soon.